Get ready to meet Faction, the David among Goliaths in the world of automated vehicles. While others go big, Faction goes small, crafting software for compact vehicles that's making a massive impact. Their secret? Perfectly matching vehicle size with payload, slashing congestion, and shrinking carbon footprints. Faction Solutions Architects are innovating a safe and stylish driverless experience, featuring breakthroughs like Teleassist, a ground control dream team, and a futuristic DriveLink platform with sensors that survey every bit of the road ahead. Hello everybody, Stefano here. Telemetry data, video streams, and Teleassist. Today, we get an inside look at the big loop of driverless mobility, with Faction. It's an exciting new model for the market, and I'm super happy to have with us Andrea Mariotti from Faction. Ciao, Andrea. I'm very happy to be here. How are you? I'm doing good, and you? Great. Andrea, before we get started, I think that Ayn has a special surprise for us. Ayn is the CEO of Faction. Yes, what we have organized is we place an order with Coca-Cola, which is our first customer. It's an industrial bakery. They make delicious pastries, and it's sending one of our vehicles to deliver an order for us. Fantastic. Perfect for our break. Indeed. Hey Stefano, we figured the best way to show you how Faction works is to send you some pastries. What we learned now over the years, uh, many of the founding team, uh, but also the, uh, the team today at Faction, have worked on autonomy, have worked on in this industry for a number of years. And what we realized, what is missing today is a platform that is software defined, where the vehicle is fully integrated, so that we can monitor everything that's going on with the vehicle the vehicle then can be enabled to keep itself safe because you know the state of yeah. the sensor is the state of the motor, the state of the batteries and so on and so forth. And we can push software updates just like a notorious OEM does so that we can enhance feature, correct uh, issues and so on. So DriveLink is really a software defined vehicle platform that we choose to uh, deploy in this format for now, but it can be deployed in many other vehicle types. Yeah. And then it's fully integrated from the ground up with Teleassist, which is our solution for remote assistance. Because again, from day one, we knew that uh, autonomy doesn't work 100%. So we wanted to have a package that actually allow us to deliver value to our end customers. And the magic to the end customer is that pastry will arrive. Yeah, uh, the fact we're waiting that, for that. Exactly. Uh, the fact that it's done with potentially a remote assistance say 10% of the time because maybe the vehicle gets stuck because somebody eh, dropped a stroller in the middle of the road it has happened. Uh, we don't want to solve those kind of problem in AI. The human will solve it in a matter of seconds, send the vehicle on its way, yeah. and the passenger will And arrive. the vehicle will continue autonomously you know, for, the, for the remaining part of the route that has been uh, programmed. Correct. Yeah, absolutely smart. And another example of the big loop, right, that the sector is aiming into, and that's fantastic. So that's, that's great. I don't know, it was really awesome to see the vehicle going around uh, to make these deliveries and uh, picking up hours. And uh, while we wait for uh, the pastures to arrive, why don't we go behind the scenes and uh, have a look at the architecture? Sure. So what we have here is the zoom-in version of our overall architecture. Specifically, this is focusing on the Teleassist. It's our uh, product for remote assisting vehicles that are uh, operating in driverless mode. And what you can see here on the left-hand side we are using uh, AWS technologies for streaming from the cameras and to uh, send commands and telemetry back to the cloud. And so we're focusing on using the KVS for the streaming part. And we're using the uh, IoT Greengrass for, uh, to create channels to move data back and forth for telemetry and for controls. Yeah. And so those are our two main pipes, if you will, that connect to each individual vehicles. Yeah, and, and you then, see that the data then is stored in S3 buckets. Correct. As you can see in the upper part of the architecture. Correct. Right? So what we're doing, in, uh, you can see it in, in the middle, we're using the Lambda functions in order to then uh, manage and filter the data coming in so that we can redirect some of that uh, and store the telemetry for later use. Uh, and at the same time, redirect to the front end. You can see that we have the UI for the, the teleassist uh, operations. And that gets the data directly from, uh, from those two streams. Obviously, the, uh, the stream comes from the vehicle up to the cloud. Uh, and this was, by the way, instrumental in, in using and choosing AWS as a partner for this technology, because we knew we wanted to use a P2P uh, technology for streaming. We knew that we were uh, going to select WebRTC, and when we find out Amazon already has it, um, yeah. AWS already has it, 
it was great to find out that also there is this uh, effort uh, for AWS to work with automotive. And so we adopted uh, and embraced it. Yeah. Uh, it's great to be able to use the UKVS because it's already implementing everything that we need so that my engineers can focus on our core activities, which yeah. is the software and firmware that runs on the vehicle. Yeah. And we can just uh, uh, integrate and uh, leverage what AWS already provides us. So that's why we choose uh, KVS. KVS. And are you integrating the WebRTC, the C client, uh, in the code directly in the vehicle? That's correct. That's oh, correct. That's uh, cool. Everything that runs in the vehicle is is either embedded C or C++. Yeah. So it was great to have the library already provided to us uh, from KVS. And so what we have here is our fleet management system architecture. That, again, shows the vehicle on this side and the data from the vehicle coming up as a telemetry being consumed by the Lambda functions and then redirected into different storages. And all, all the way on the other side, you can see we have the UI for fleet management system. And this is vehicle inventory, mission controls, um, what we call a, a ground control. It's an overview of where the entire fleet is, close to live uh, for, uh, for each vehicle so that we can actually interact with the fleet and we can see which vehicle require assistance. Yeah. Because fundamentally, we're not in autonomous autonomy company, we're a driverless company, so we are supervised autonomy. Yeah. In the, I assume that here I see, for example, RDS Postgres, so that's why you need probably a little bit more structured data. Correct. Uh, to, I don't know, the missions, the vehicles, uh, that kind of a data that stays and fits well in that kind of technology. Correct. And you're right on it. We, uh, we need structured data, we need unstructured data, and that's why the flexibility of using AWS services enable us to do those things. So, for example, there are sensory data that might be unstructured that we want to store in, uh, in perhaps a, a S3 for later use. But then there is also the, the vehicle inventory, telemetry, we want to be able to parse it and search it. Uh, there is actual, since we are a business, we have customer uh, reference uh, missions that are being executed, billing as well. So those things are clearly, <laughs> they're clearly a fit for structured data and yeah. yes. And here in the bottom part, uh, I see probably it's the map management system. That's right. So the way we operate, we have a low resolution mapping so that our vehicle effectively can act both as a driverless vehicle with supervised autonomy or as a mapping vehicle so that um, we can qualify the routes by running the routes in manual mode. And then the data gets ingested, gets processed in the cloud. And once we have a certain KPIs being met, we know that the vehicle can operate that route. We call it a qualified route. And from that point on, we can deploy effectively any vehicle. And again, this is all part of the fleet management side where we can open the mission control, pick a vehicle they want to assign to a certain mission, and off it goes. Yeah, that's fantastic. And uh, everything contributes to, to keep the carbon footprint lower, right? Correct. Even uh, the computational power that is needed uh, being frugal in that too. So Correct. Very in fact, interesting. This package, this vehicle in our computing, is an order of magnitude less CO2 per mile than even an electric vehicle, uh, a sedan electric vehicle, and is many order of magnitude less than a, a conventional uh, internal combustion engine van, for example. Andrea, thank you so much. It's been a great overview of uh, the faction vehicles and the architecture supporting the service. So thank you so much. And oh, look at that. Just received uh, our Coca-Cola box. Right? Perfect. And after this really great uh, dive into the tech behind autonomous mobility systems, staring at it, I'm just famished, right? I tell you that. So we can enjoy together maybe some strawberry croissant. Let's do just it. Just deliver from one of your vehicles. As Faction propels into the future, they're not just driving vehicles. They're driving change, one innovative step at a time. They've embraced the magic of small-scale, air-cooled, budget-friendly components like radars, visual spectrums, and thermal cameras, all connected in perfect harmony. With a 360-degree gaze around the vehicle, pedestrians and even pets are safe. For Faction and the Big Loop, this isn't just hardware. It's a high-tech waltz between software and gadgets. Together, they're not only crafting a mesmerizing driverless journey, but also cutting down on CO2 emissions like eco-superheroes.